The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. On behalf of RBCS, RBCS New Zealand, RBCS Australia, Software Test Works, and Software Test Professionals, we welcome everyone today to this webinar on ISTQV certification. I am Rex Black, President of RBCS, a worldwide testing and quality assurance firm serving clients ranging from small startups to Fortune 20 global enterprises. Since 1994, RBCS has been both a pioneer and leader in quality hardware and software testing. RBCS has offices in the United States, New Zealand, Australia, and Sri Lanka with partners around the world. RBCS delivers insight and confidence to our clients, helping them get quality software and hardware products to market on time with measurable return on investment. RBCS has a team of international consultants that deliver customized training, consulting, and outsourcing services for companies that are looking to improve their test and quality assurance practices. RBCS has helped hundreds of companies reduce development and support costs while assuring the best quality products are delivered to customers. I am the author of Pragmatic Software Testing, Advanced Software Testing Volumes 1, 2, and Soon to Come 3, Foundations of Software Testing, Critical Testing Processes, and Managing the Testing Process. I hold a degree in Computer Science and Engineering from UCLA. I'm also past president of the International Software Testing Qualifications Board and the American Software Testing Qualifications Board. RBCS is presenting this webinar in partnership with Software Test Professionals, the producer of Software Test Professionals Conference 2011, to be held March 22nd through 20, March 24th. If you'd like to learn more about the conference, visit www.stpcon.com. If you haven't visited their association website, make sure you check out uh, their uh, check it out as well at uh, softwaretestpro.com. As a special incentive for attending today's webinar, STP is giving a $200 discount to their conference. When you register to attend, use this code, STP11WEB. $200 discount is not combinable with other offers. Before we start the presentation, a couple of housekeeping notes. If you have any questions during the course of the webinar, please feel free to submit them throughout the presentation via your webinar interface. There's no need to ask for presentation copies. The presentation is on the web at www.rbcs-us.com. It's on the basic library page of the resources tab. There's also no need to ask how to register for the free e-learning. Just by attending this webinar, you are automatically registered. Check your email over the next couple days. Watch the spam filter to make sure the notification doesn't get lost there. You have a limited time to respond if you are the winner. If you're having problems with either the audio or visual components of this webinar, please contact GoToWebinar Support. If for whatever reason you cannot get to the webinar online or if you're dealing with an unreliable connection, please download the slides. As I said, it's on the Resources tab, Basic Library page at www.rbcs-us.com. Be sure to use the telephone to connect rather than voice over IP. Hope you enjoy this free webinar from RBCS. We do these free webinars as a service to the software testing community because at RBCS we're a not just for profit company. Okay, today's presentation is on ISTQB certification. The ISTQB certification program is about 10 years old now. Already close to 200,000 certificates have been issued. The program is proving enormously successful around the world. RBCS is an accredited ISTQB training provider, as are dozens of other training providers around the world. Of course, we think we're the best. However, unlike many other certifications, training is not required. And this is one of the things that makes the ISTQB program unique. In this webinar will examine how the ISTQB program is unique and how it can benefit you. So here are the topics that we'll cover today in our brief webinar. What is tester certification? What are the ASTQB and ISTQB? What are the levels of certification that uh, you can attain? And what is the impact of certification on the tester, on the organization, and on the testing profession? So software uh, tester certification, what is it? 
Tester certification is designed to confirm through objective and carefully designed exams the professional capabilities of software testers. Now what exactly does that mean? Well, objective means that the exams are designed um, based on a well-established body of knowledge that has been through a, uh, a rigorous process of development subjected to the comments of a wide range of um, practitioners and trainers and consultants and academics confirm that that does actually have something to do with professional capabilities. Uh, the carefully designed exam piece, what this means is that uh, we uh, work with professional psychometrics firms. For example, the American Board, ASTQB, uses the criterion, Drake Criterion Psychometrics Firm, to ensure that the exams are indeed valid measures of the bodies of knowledge as defined by the ISTQB. So this is something that's rather unique as well about the ISTQB program is the uh, degree of care to, to which the um, entire exam process is, is put. Um, and really the exams, I mean the exams are what distinguish a certification from a training, right? I mean anybody can offer a training, uh, but if there's no exam at the end, it's not really a certification. Now we are aware that there are some certifications out there that um, are based purely on attendance. To me that's rather frankly strange because uh, simply being able to keep a seat warm for three days or what have you is uh, hardly proof that uh, essential ideas have been absorbed from the uh, from the training. So in the ISTQB program the concept of training is um, separated from the concept of certification and uh, in, indeed uh, training is not required to take an exam. You can take an exam based entirely on your own self-study. The ISTQB's approach also includes some other elements that I think are important. It is practical and it is real world focused. During the development of the bodies of knowledge, which are also referred to as the syllabi, uh, being plural of syllabus, the focus of the people on the working parties is really on uh, practicality. Who's doing this? Who's applying this idea in the real world? How is this, pro this idea solving problems for people in the real world. And if the answer is it's not, and it's purely theoretical or it's academic research at this point, then it's not included. So it really is very much a practice-based certification. Um, and this is one of the reasons why practitioners play such a po prominent role in the ISTQB program, especially in the working parties. Uh, I've been privileged to serve on all three working parties, uh, all three syllabus working parties in the ISTQB foundation level, the advanced level, and the expert level. So I'm familiar with this uh, process and, and how, uh, how it works, the definition of these uh, bodies of knowledge. ISTQB's approach supports a career path. There are levels of certification and there is, uh, as you will see in just a bit, a point at which diversification occurs. We have branching along the career path. The idea really is to support a career path from the entry level all the way up through the more uh, senior levels, the uh, expert levels of uh, a person's career. The ISTQB approach promotes the software testing as a profession. It um, identifies skills that are unique to software testing that are not part of, uh, say, the more uh, general uh, software development uh, profession and focuses in on, on those specific um, areas. It is designed to promote, as I say, the profession in the sense that at the, well, at the foundation level, the uh, intention is primarily to capture the key ideas that uh, underlie professional testing. At the expert level, it really is designed to uh, capture the uh, 
true best practices at state of the art um, facilities, uh, the, the kinds of the organizations that are really in the vanguard as far as professional testing goes, and promulgate those practices in a way that makes them more accessible to a broad range of, uh, of practitioners, thus pulling the entire profession up with it. Um, that's a major tenant of the ISTQB program. As I've mentioned, the um, people defining the program, people governing the program are uh, experts across a uh, four main areas um, of testing. There are the practitioners, people who are in the trenches every day doing testing, managing testing, doing automation. There are consultants such as myself who spend their lives out working with clients, helping them do testing better. There are trainers, which is also something that uh, RBCS does and doing uh, delivering uh, training programs to organizations, um, teaching them how to uh, do testing. And uh, there are academics involved as well who uh, represent the, uh, the academic perspective on where the uh, software testing and, uh, within the uh, realm of software engineering is going over time. And as I said before, training is not required to take exams. There's a, a um, firm separation between the uh, running of the exam, taking of the exam, and um, whether someone is uh, uh, receiving training. Anyone, whether they have taken training or not, is allowed to take exam, assuming that they meet the uh, experience qualifications of the, uh, the exam level that they uh, wish to take. Now, um, these last two points, the uh, cross-functional uh, composition, if you will, of the ISTQB governance and working parties uh, is, uh, I think, a key distinction between ISTQB and any of the other testing certifications that you might care to look at. And um, the separation between training and the exams is also a key distinction. Um, I think any other testing certification that you look at, while they might claim that there is a uh, separation between training and exams, or they might not. They might not even bother to claim such a thing. But uh, some that do uh, bother to claim it um, really go to some lengths to make sure that the only training available to take the exams is training provided by uh, people within their organizations. The ISTQB does not do that. Um, there are a number of training providers, for example, in North America uh, who have nothing to do with the ISTQB program other than being accredited training providers. Uh, and um, some of those um, training providers sell more training in North America, nor ISTQB training in North America than RBCS does. So um, the program is uh, quite uh, independent, if you will, of the, uh, of the training. Let's take a look at the American Software Testing Qualification Board just as an example of how these national boards work. Each national board is a little different, but they all uh, are very similar in terms of their composition and um, uh, in terms of how, how they operate, as I said, with, with some differences appropriate to the local uh, market. So the ASTQB is composed of recognized experts in the software testing community in, in North America. This is a mix of practitioners, consultants, trainers, and academics. Currently, we have um, uh, Pat McQuaid, who's a professor at um, um, Cal Poly in um, California, She's serving as president. She's uh, represents an, an academic perspective. Uh, we have Joe Gantz, the vice president, who is a practitioner um, working at uh, large companies, um, large and medium-sized companies as a uh, director of testing. And we have Randy Rice, treasurer, who um, is primarily a trainer but also a consultant as well. Debbie Friedenberg, who is the chair of the technical advisory group of the ASTQB, is a practitioner. Um, working at a uh, large uh, institution as a director of testing. 
And then uh, there's myself. I'm a consultant and a trainer. With uh, Taz Daughtry, who is an academic and a practitioner. Jerry Everett, who was an internal trainer for a number of years now, is doing training more broadly. We have Judy McKay, who is a consultant and practitioner. We have uh, Andrew uh, Palmer, who is a uh, trainer. And um, that's assisted by uh, professional services of uh, Lois Kostrowski, who's a managing director, um, runs a uh, company that provides services to um, small nonprofits, such as the ASTQB, to help them um, run their operations. So it's a it's a small-ish group, but uh, sufficient for the purposes of running the ISTQB program in the United States. And uh, we in the ASTQB develop and administer exams, um, primarily in North America, though there are the, the ASTQB's exams are used around the world. Different national boards around the world are free to either develop their own exams or to um, get exams from other national boards and use them. Uh, so that's the uh, way that the various uh, entities around the world work together. Um, the ASTQB also uh, credits trainers and uh, issues um, permission to the trainers to you, um, advertise the course as an accredited course and to use the uh, logos ISTQB and ASTQB um, logos in their, um, in their uh, advertisement. Um, the ISTQB also um, participates in uh, various ISTQB activities such as creating um, creating the uh, syllabi, contributing to the syllabi, defining processes, uh, defining the glossary, and, and so forth. Now, on this slide, you can see a list of the 47 national boards. Excuse me. Something dropped on my keyboard there. Um, 47 national boards uh, that make up the ISTQB uh, currently. These are drawn around the world. There's a Malaysian board, a Latvian board, the Norwegian board, the Brazilian board, the Chinese board, the uh, Japanese board, Vietnamese board, Indian board, Australian New Zealand board, um, Canadian board. There's really coverage uh, around the world. Um, coverage in Africa through the South African board and the Nigerian board and uh, just recently admitted and not yet on this slide the Tunisian board. So um, really good um, good international coverage. I'd say that probably at this point say um, in terms of um, the software testing community just purely on the numbers uh, we probably cover 90 percent of the countries in which uh, those software test professionals reside. Now, software test professionals who are in countries not currently covered by national boards can take ISTQB exams through various electronic exam centers. For example, the ASTQB exams are available through Criterion exam centers, which are located around the world. And there are a couple other, uh, Pearson View and Prometric, that um, are available uh, worldwide. So really, in terms of uh, the software test professionals, having access to the uh, to the program uh, via the exams the ability to become accredited or excuse me certified testers uh, is um, is probably uh, close to a hundred percent if not at a hundred percent so we really have established a, a worldwide presence that reaches out to the entire software testing professional community the ISTQB is a collegial and sharing organization. The national boards work together very cooperatively, both at the uh, in bilateral or um, multilateral fashions, as well as through the ISTQB itself. The distinction I'm drawing there is that, for example, the uh, ASTQB works with the Canadian board in terms of provision of exams. It's a bilateral agreement. It has nothing to do with the ISTQB. 
but the um, ISTQB also coordinates um, in inter-board activities as well. For example, through the working parties, working parties are composed of national board delegates, and these working parties do things like define the syllabi or bodies of knowledge, define the glossaries, define the processes, and so forth. Now these working parties uh, distill the collective experience and wisdom that's represented across these boards, which is easily in excess of 5,000 person years in terms of the people who are active in the working parties. So this is a truly uh, tremendous amount of uh, software testing experience that is uh, collected and um, um, concentrated by the uh, members of these uh, working parties in the ISTQB. It's a very uh, decentralized organization, but it manages to achieve tremendous uh, scale uh, by its presence across all of these, um, all of these different uh, national boards. Let's look at some of the certi certifications that the uh, ISTQB program provides. We have the foundation certification. This is an entry level certification that um, is targeted really at anybody who has uh, interest in or, or more especially an involvement in software testing. Now, the goals of the foundation certification are to ensure a broad understanding of fundamental best practices and key concepts in software testing. Software testing as a um, separate uh, sub-discipline within software engineering is, draws upon ideas that certainly stretch back at least 25 years to uh, uh, works like uh, Glenford Meyer's book, The Art of Software Testing. Uh, if not uh, before that, when um, maybe it wasn't seen as a separate discipline, but certainly was a discipline practiced within software engineering and some of the more advanced uh, organizations. So a lot of great ideas have been developed over that quarter century or more, and the foundation certificate seeks to package up those ideas in a way that makes them accessible to people at an entry level. This provides a good foundation for professional growth as a software testing professional throughout the uh, individual's career. That's a great uh, way to get started in the profession or a great way to make sure wherever you are in the profession uh, in terms of your career development that you um, have the fundamental ideas that uh, there aren't any uh, significant gaps in your knowledge. Body of knowledge covers Topics like fundamentals of testing, things like uh, principles of testing such as defect clustering. It looks at how testing fits into the software lifecycle. Um, static techniques such as reviews and static analysis. Of course, static analysis is becoming uh, more and more popular uh, lately. White box and black box test design concepts. Basic white box and black box test design concepts are covered. Uh, of course, that's, that's very helpful, certainly understanding things like test coverage, white box test coverage is very important lately. Um, basic black box techniques like boundary value analysis and uh, equivalence partitioning and decision tables and state diagrams, use of state diagrams is very important. There is a basic discussion of test management that is uh, covered, give you an idea of uh, how testing is managed and what that means to you and a coverage of testing tools that are available. Now, you don't have to take training, as I said, but to get an idea of what, what the, the scope is of the covered concepts, um, how, much, how big the set of ideas is, syllabus-based training courses are typically anywhere from three to five days. Uh, the RBCS course, for example, is four days long. So, Figuring about six instructional hours per day, that's about 24 hours of um, both uh, lecture and uh, hands-on exercises, practice and exams and so forth. So it uh, gives you an idea of uh, what makes up the foundation. Now, 24 hours may not sound like a lot, but certainly we have plenty 
we RBCS have worked with plenty of um, uh, nonprofit um, uh, official government universities around the world where we've lent um, instructors at no charge the use of our material to train people within their universities and uh, that's typically enough material to make up an entire semester course. So it's not like its own whole college curricula by any means, nor is it intended to be, but in terms of say a testing 101, sort of an entry level course in testing, it's certainly uh, sufficient for that. Current status is that there was a release in March 2010, um, and um, there's a, a minor update due out shortly. Typically, major updates to the syllabi, including the foundation syllabi, happen once every five years. Now, let's move on to the advanced level. The advanced level is really targeted at people with five or more years of experience. It's kind of the midpoint in the career. The goals are to ensure an understanding of advanced best practices and key concepts in software testing that are appropriate to people who are committed professional testers and demonstrated that through their work uh, over the last uh, number of years. It supports ongoing professional growth by building on top of the foundation uh, as well as introducing new ideas not previously covered in the foundation. The um, Syllabus structure is such that um, there are three separate modules, Advanced Test Manager, Advanced Test Analyst, and Advanced Technical Test Analyst. Uh, the Advanced uh, Test Analyst looks at uh, advanced behavioral or black box testing focused on independent testers. The uh, Advanced Technical Test Analyst looks at technical concepts, naturally enough, such as automation and advanced uh, structural or white box testing techniques uh, for both testers and for programmers who have a strong involvement in testing, which, of course, is becoming more uh, popular these days with uh, the advent and the uh, advance of agile techniques. And um, the Advanced Test Manager covers uh, fairly sophisticated test management concepts, uh, basically those concepts which one would need to know to be a uh, test manager or a um, director of testing in an organization. Uh, just in terms of size of the material again, um, each advanced module is uh, five, requires five days of uh, training. Um, so you're looking at 15 days across the three modules. So now we're getting up to the point where we're talking about um, potentially three semester length courses in a university building on top of the uh, foundation level. Um, so you know certainly we're, we're getting into uh, more of a curriculum, if you will, uh, at that point. The uh, new advanced syllabus uh, was released in October 2007, building upon a previous uh, version of the advanced syllabus that uh, was not quite structured that way. The working party is currently working to develop a uh, newer advanced syllabus. So I'm part of that working party, and that will probably come out in 2012. Okay, so let's look at the expert level. This is for your real established leaders in the field, eight plus years of experience. The expert level, we're trying to ensure that there's consistent understanding and execution of uh, proven cutting edge techniques by seasoned test professionals. And this is really where promoting the profession comes about. Um, leading the profession, uh, making sure that we actively disseminate within the software testing community those ideas that have proven their worth, the cutting edge, and which are ready for a uh, wide-scale dissemination. Now we're currently in the process of developing a lot of these. There's improving the test process, test automation, test management, uh, security testing, and more in various stages of uh, development, uh, improving the test process and test management will go live in 2011. Um, there are two other new expert syllabi currently underway. 
Um, Syllabus-based training courses will be offered for these. It's, at this point, it's not clear what the duration will be, but it will probably be longer than five days, maybe as much as 10. So we're getting into some uh, uh, fairly significant sets of uh, investments of time and a real curriculum again here with, uh, with the addition of the experts. The expert syllabi will probably be defined for the most part and released over this decade. And so by uh, 2020, um, we can expect the um, ISTQB program to be fully matured with a um, complete span of syllabi at um, really all levels of uh, someone's career path, regardless of where that career path uh, might be taking them. And I'm working currently on the expert test manager um, syllabus right now, which is uh, rapidly approaching completion. To visualize the levels, you kind of think of these as a, like a tree. Um, you know, the root is the foundation, and uh, advanced technical test analyst, we've got the advanced test analyst or functional focus, we've got the advanced manager above that, and then various expert syllabi above that. And you know, the relative um, sizes of the boxes, the area in, in the boxes here is a rough representation of the uh, relative number of potential certificate holders that we think are out there. We expect that in a uh, uh, fully mature situation in, in 2020 that uh, probably about 20 percent of people 20 to 30 percent of people who get an advanced uh, foundation level, excuse me, will proceed to an advanced level, one or more of the advanced levels. And 20 to 30 percent of people who proceed to an advanced level will probably proceed on to the uh, one of the expert levels. Now, um, numbers. This slide shows the progression of the program since May 2006. We could extrapolate back further the beginnings of the program, but really at that point in 2006, you can see that it's achieved fairly significant traction. And by um, June of 2010, which is you know, four years later, the uh, program has increased uh, five-fold to above um, 150,000. And you see that um, smooth upward motion, uh, no signs of any real plateauing. The drop-down lines represent data points where the numbers, numbers are available. So that explains some of the, uh, of the um, apparent plateauing is really due to the data points uh, when they're available more than anything else. Um, now, these numbers are almost a year old at this point. Um, latest numbers put the ISTQB uh, program um, certainly in the uh, 180,000 range. And uh, within the uh, next, uh, well, certainly by the end of 2011, uh, the figures will almost certainly be over 200,000, which is a uh, really spectacular progress. You look at this, you know, at that point, the program will be about 10 years old. So it will be averaging 20,000 certificates issued uh, per year, which is um, an amazing uh, growth. Of, of the program. Now, what's the value of this? You know, it's not just enough to say, well, look at the numbers, so since there are so many people, therefore this must be a um, valuable program. I mean, I think that's to some extent true. Market acceptance of that size indicates the market sees a tremendous amount of value in the program, but now, focusing on the stakeholders, uh, what's the value of the certification? Well, the tester can use the program to demonstrate mastery of, of best practices in testing and uh, key concepts in the field. 
um, at a level of mastery appropriate to their uh, point in their career. So this uh, really allows them to uh, demonstrate that mastery, as I said, uh, to themselves and to others, sort of benchmark themselves against uh, where, where their peers are. Uh, and when I say their peers, I'm talking about peers in leading uh, software testing organizations. Because you're measuring yourself in terms of best practices, which in testing is the best practices are certainly not typical practices. So we are, again, promoting the profession through this, um, this idea of um, you know, disseminating best practices and examining against best practices. Now, of course, from purely uh, remunerative um, basis, the tester uh, can advance their career and their opportunities in a competitive job market, and that's something that we see uh, with a number of the uh, stakeholders um, in, as, as testers. They pursue the certification not only for their own personal satisfaction and professional growth, but also for their professional advancement. Now, what's the value to the organization? Well, this, it'll, it'll ensure better testing, uh, which supports better software, and also lowers the cost of poor quality. And certainly, we've had a number of experiences with clients that indicate that they, um, they achieve a positive return on investment for putting people through these um, certification programs, the value it's um, enjoyed by the organization from uh, improving the testing exceeds the uh, cost associated with getting people through the program. Also, just within the within the organization, a higher level of consistency, reusability of testing, commonality of language, and so forth is another uh, major benefit to the organizations that choose to standardize on the ISDQB certification program. Now, to the profession, um, the value really is to build on, on our best work, to consolidate the best practices that have been accumulated across many different um, practitioners and uh, really stop going in circles. We've seen um, a lot of uh, lack of real forward motion. Uh, best practices and typical practices, there's a big gap in testing. Uh, it's almost like same thing were the case in uh, software development. The um, majority of software developers would still be writing uh, code in COBOL. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with COBOL, but obviously things have advanced quite a bit in the last 25 years in software development. In software testing, the uh, state of uh, best practices is about 25 years ahead of the state of typical practices. And as I said, we are going in circles, and we want to help stop that. We want to really define what it is to be a professional tester and define the profession. So there's a lot of value to the certification program, to the various different stakeholders. Uh, we think that this is a um, excellent program to be involved with. Certainly I as a professional am proud of the uh, um, involvement that I've had uh, in the program and uh, proud to continue to be involved in the program and see it uh, move forward. And certainly would welcome, uh, welcome each of you if you're not already involved uh, to um, learn more about the certification and hopefully you pursue it. So that concludes the um, main body of the uh, presentation. Um, at this point I'm going to uh, open up the floor to uh, questions. If you do have any questions, you can use the webinar uh, question uh, and answer feature, the questions tab, to submit your questions. I'm going to um, take a second here to uh, expand the question window and uh, get this out and into the uh, broader UI here. Again, stand for just a minute. Go to webinar. It's got kind of a clunky question interface. It always takes a little while to get set up. Um, so, as I said, happy to take questions. Please feel free to submit them. Um, 
So I've got some email questions to uh, get us started. Um, question here, what do you think is the primary motivation for people to get ISTQB certification? Well, as I said, that really um, that can vary quite a bit. Um, you know, we see some people who are really looking for professional advancement. They want to uh, measure themselves against uh, against their peers, uh, the their leading peers, the ones who are practicing according to best practices. And um, we also see people who are uh, looking to get it because. Uh, you know they um, they see that as expanding their job opportunities, making it uh, making more positions accessible to them. Um, and of course, a number of people get the certification because uh, honestly, their boss sent them to do it. Their boss has decided that the benefits of the organization are there, and they want uh, they want to be managing a team of um, professional and certified testers. So there can be various uh, motivations that that apply. A cynical question, isn't the ISTQB program mostly about making money for training providers? Well, um, certainly I can see how some people would reach that conclusion based on some of the other certification programs out there, not just testing certification programs, but other software certifications in general. But really, the ISTQB program was de designed in... in the uh, way to uh, firewall off that that um, potentially uh, uh, nepotistic, I guess you could say, um, motivation. As I said, training is not required to take an exam. Never has been. Never will be. It is not a quote unquote education based certification where that's usually a euphemism for you've got to take approved training and then there's a whole um, host of things that go into getting your training approved for that. Um, now, of course, there is accreditation and, um, you know, that you might look at the accreditation and say, well, you know, isn't that just uh, uh, trainer money spinning through the back door? Um, no. It's really not. The accreditation is not about driving people to take training. Again, people can take whatever training they want, and they can take no training at all if they want. If they want to take a non-accredited training, they can do that. Accreditation, that really does for you, is ensure that if you choose to take training and you choose to take one that is accredited, you have some assurance that it will indeed be aligned with the appropriate syllabi. So that's going to be the benefit of it. Now, our, um, <coughs> excuse me, are there training providers such as myself involved in the program? Yeah, absolutely. But there are also non-training providers involved in the program, quite a few of them. So this is not a cabal of training providers that have gotten together to try to um, uh, you know, capture the market or something along those lines. Um, let's see. What's going on here with the... Yeah, there we go. Um, question from Trevor. Will the ISTQB syllabus be updated to cater to new software testing standards? For example, the ISO 29119. It's a good question, Trevor. Um, I think the answer to that question depends very much on what happens with 29119. Um, it's not so much, to be honest, uh, that, you know, should the ISDQB syllabus cater to those standards, but rather should those standards recognize the 
de facto position of the ISTQB. Um, I would suggest that given that certainly by the time 29119 comes out, which would be no sooner than the end of this year, and by that time, the ISTQB program will have achieved uh, 20,000 or 200,000, excuse me, 200,000 certificates. So who caters to whom in that situation? I mean, certainly I would hope that people involved in defining 29119 would recognize the uh, stakes in the ground, if you will, that have been uh, placed there, the um, trail that has been blazed by the ISTQB program and adopt ideas that are consistent. Now certainly we'd be, um, in, in my opinion, the ISTQB would be wise to consider all uh, standards that are out there and uh, look to them as useful inputs. But I think cater would really be the wrong word. I think it's more a matter of to the extent that um, 29119 contains ideas that people within the ISTQB feel are useful to the ISTQB stakeholder communities. And great, you know, we can, um, certainly uh, look to recognize those. I would think the ISTQB working parties would want to do that. But um, to the extent that uh, standards diverge from what the ISTQB working groups recognize as best practices, I think um, you can count on the ISTQB maintaining its leadership role in the software testing community by uh, focusing on best practices wherever they might be rather than best practices that come out of a, uh, uh, some standards committee. Uh, again, not that standards committees are not useful. They certainly are be useful sources of ideas. But um, I think if you look at the composition of the ISTQB, it's national boards, people on the working groups. There's certainly as much wisdom and experience within those groups as, um, as one might find in any other group of professionals who are looking to uh, define standards. Let's see. Another question here. Question from Lahiru. Does a candidate have to take all three parts of the advanced certification, manager, technical, and um, technical test analyst and test analyst at once, or can a candidate sit for one part of the exam at a time? Absolutely. Here are the, uh, the advanced program is modularized so that uh, you can take uh, one exam, you can take two exams, you can take all three exams. Now, if you pass all three, and you get to call yourself a CTAL full, Certified Tester Advanced Level full, um, which, which is great. But if you have no need for all three, you certainly have no requirement to take all three. And certainly you, you <laughs> would be um, uh, well advised to take them um, one at a time rather than taking them all at once. I know when I was involved uh, early on and... Um, you know, we're still kind of struggling with uh, defining the new advanced. Uh, I took all three advanced exams in one sitting. Now, at that time, each advanced exam was only an hour and a half, or the three hours they are now. But I took all of them at one sitting with a 15-minute break in between. Um, so um, that was five hours of continuous exam taking, which... Uh, was a painful experience and not one that I would encourage anyone to try. Though, um, you know, Lahiru, if you are uh, made of, of sterner stuff than me and can take three three-hour exams back-to-back -back and can find a way to do that, for example, at an exam center, uh, my hat's off to you. It's, uh, it would be a, uh, a noble accomplishment, um, though certainly one that um, would uh, probably bring on a rather enormous headache. Um, and another uh, email question here, uh, should I hire testers based on the certification? Hmm. Well, let me answer it this way. Certainly, if you're going to hire testers and somebody comes in and they've got the ISTQB certification, that tells you something, especially if it's an advanced level. Foundation level tells you 
less. But the advanced level certainly demonstrates a commitment to the profession and a degree of experience that is exceptional and um, that uh, distinguishes this person perhaps in, in ways from other people that you might uh, get involved. Now, um, that said, uh, is it possible to find um, equally qualified or perhaps even better qualified candidates who do not have the uh, certification? Sure, absolutely it is. Um, I mean, the certification really just recognizes a level of uh, maturity and experience and knowledge. Um, that level of experience, maturity, and knowledge in the field is something that one attains um, through, through efforts over a period of years. So you could have it and never have bothered to take the exam. Uh, but the exam certainly does tell you something about the person that um, the... Uh, um, that is helpful. Now that said, um, the exam is just that. It's an exam and um, you know it does not prove that in a certain situation uh, somebody with the certification would uh, have say better judgment or um, better um, ability to respond to an evolving situation that you know there are there are many things that go into being a software test professional just like there's anything many things that go into being any kind of professional knowledge of a set of ideas as uh, demonstrated through taking an exam is certainly part of it but uh, there are other really important things too so I guess I would say that while you certainly could prefer candidates who had the advanced uh, level certification, even the foundation level certification in your hiring process, um, it would be unwise to rely on those certifications entirely as a way of establishing uh, somebody's qualification and fitness for the position. You uh, really want to look at more than just certification. Though, as I said, certification could figure into your, your uh, calculations, if you will. All right, well, that, um, that winds down our uh, brief um, webinar on the ISDQB certification. Um, to uh, close this session, let me tell you a little bit more about the resources available through RBCS. We run these free webinar sessions once a month, so check on our website, www.rbcs-us.com, to sign up. If you would like a special webinar presentation for your company only of this webinar or on any other topic related to software testing, please contact us at info at rbcs-us.com or via our website. If you don't already receive our regular free newsletter, you can sign up at www.rbcs-us.com. By signing up, you'll get valuable discounts on consulting and training services along with a regular newsletter that includes a featured article on software testing and quality and news about what RBCS and its partners are doing lately. You can follow us on Twitter at uh, twitter.com slash rbcs and on Facebook at facebook.com slash pages slash rbcs dash inc. Uh, remember, check your uh, email over the next couple days. You might be the lucky winner of a free uh, green e-learning course from RBCS. You are registered for a random drawing for such a course simply by attending this free event. Uh, check out our digital library with recordings of these webinars, podcasts, and videos. That's on the RBCS uh, website. Go to the resources page, digital library. Uh, you can subscribe to our podcast via iTunes by uh, entering RBCS Podcast into the search string in the iTunes store. And you can see the videos and recorded podcasts by subscribing to the RBCS channel on YouTube. We uh, offer these um, free resources as a service to the software testing community because, as I said before, at RBCS, we're a not-just-for-profit company. That concludes the webinar today, and I would like to thank everyone for joining us. Have a great uh, morning or uh, evening, uh, wherever you happen to be. Goodbye.